This week, I hope we can pass major bipartisan legislation to make sure that veterans who have been living with chronic illnesses because of toxic exposure during their time in uniform will finally get the health care and benefits they have earned and that they deserve. Soon the Senate Health Committee that I chair will mark up the most comprehensive FDA legislation we have passed in many years and the most comprehensive retirement package our committee has passed in a decade. And we will continue to work on a bipartisan package on mental health and substance use disorders. If we can reach across the aisle and reach an agreement that actually helps families, we will not hesitate to do so. That's why we are urging Republicans to work with us and pass the COVID emergency funding bill so our communities are ready for the next surge or the new, next new variant. And as you heard, we are ready to work with anyone to help end gun violence. And I really hope that we can reach a deal here. But the answer to gun violence isn't arming teachers or putting guns in our classrooms. And there is a real mental health crisis in this country, one I'm working uh, on in our committee to address in a bipartisan way. But we can't just treat gun violence as a mental health issue. It is a gun issue as well, and we need to get to the root cause of these shootings. So let me be clear. We still need and will keep fighting no matter what for bold gun safety legislation, universal background checks, and an assault weapons ban. But if we can come to an agreement with Republicans on solutions that may help save lives, we are ready to get it done. So let me say it again. The question for people back home in Washington State or anywhere else isn't, is this bipartisan? It's just, will this help? That's what we're focused on. Thank you very much. Today, June 7th, is the 158th day of this year. There have already been 240 mass shootings in the United States, including three, 13, excuse me, 13 this past weekend, three of them in Michigan, Grand Rapids, Saginaw, Ecorse. Last year, almost 700 mass shootings happened, an average of almost two a day. One of them was at Oxford High School in Michigan. <clears throat> Four young lives were lost, seven people were injured, and no student in the school was left untouched. On May 26th, hundreds of those students walked out to show their support for the community of Uvalde. This is a scene happening over and over and over again. Heartbroken families, tiny caskets, stuffed animals and candles and flowers left by a school sign. Firearms are now the leading cause of death for American children. Not cancer, not accidental poisonings, and it used to be car accidents. But we did something about it when it was car accidents. In the 1980s, as a new state representative in Michigan, I authored our child safety seat legislation with a Republican colleague in the state Senate. We both had young children. We were very concerned about car accidents being the number one cause of death for children. We knew something had to be done. Frankly, it was controversial, the idea of mandating that parents had to go out and purchase a car seat and put their child uh, in a, a, a safe a car seat. But the evidence was there. It was the right thing to do. It got done and ha has saved millions of lives. Over and over again in our country, we change laws to protect American lives. And think about this one. In 2001, one person on a plane to Detroit attempted to blow up a plane with a shoe bomb. What happened? All of us have had to change what happens at the airport in terms of security and taking off our shoes. But since 1968, over a million and a half people have died from gun violence in America. The number one cause of death of children today is gun violence. If we care about our children, if we care about people young and old who are just trying to live their lives, it is past time for action. We can do better than thoughts and prayers, and I hope Republicans will join us. Thank you, Gary.
one minute. minute. One minute. Okay, there's one more thing I want to mention before I take questions. Uh, this Thursday, the bipartisan January 6th committee will hold its first public hearing. We look forward to the hearing and seeing what is presented. It's so important that the truth about what happened leading up to the insurrection on January 6th and what happened on that day is, pre is presented for the world to see. As you may have seen in the reports, one of the people who was just arrested was within 20 feet of me, and I recognized his face. So we should have, an we should have had an independent commission, but as you all know, Senate Republicans blocked it. But few things obstruct the American people from hearing the truth more than Fox News' cowardly decision not to broadcast Thursday's hearing. After all of the false facts that Fox News has allowed to be put on the air by its commentators and everyone else, they have an obligation to show the true facts by allowing the hearing to be seen by their listeners. Okay, questions on it. Leader, Go ahead. Go ahead. Leader Schumer, it was another violent weekend of mass shootings. Democrats have called this an urgent issue. So how much time are you willing to give these negotiations? And do you still want to see a deal on gun reform, at least a framework, an agreement by the end of the week? I, Senator Murphy has said to me that he hopes to come to an agreement with Senator Cornyn and the other Republicans uh, by the end of the week, and I'm willing to give him that time. Mr. Leader, yes. when do you expect to put a bipartisan bill on the floor? Same answer. When? This month? Senator, this month? Senator uh, Murphy expects he can come to an agreement with Senator Cornyn by the end of the week, and I expect to give him that time. If they don't come to that agreement, we'll see what happens after that. Month, yes. Any time here, we're expecting a, a decision from the U.S. Supreme Court on abortion and the Roe v. Wade. Is it still the Democrats' decision to codify Roe? And if so, how are the latest on the topic? The Women's Health Protection Act has the overwhelming support of our caucus. We think. That's the way to go. We've had a vote on it. We're awaiting the court decision. Um, if, if obviously it's a decision that will impinge on a woman's right to determine uh, her own health care, uh, we're going to look at what further actions we should take. You talk about the importance. You talk about the importance of whatever gets the deal that gets struck on guns have FT. That it matter. Are you committed to putting whatever deal Senators Murphy and Cornyn strike on the floor? I mean, you're not going to turn away. Look, I have a lot of faith in I have a lot of faith in Senator Murphy and the other Democrats who are negotiating. I don't think that they would bring to us a deal that had no teeth. Yes. On Iran, the International Atomic Energy Agency is meeting in Vienna this week. The general director said he cannot certify Iran's peaceful intentions for a nuclear program. Are you expecting the situation to develop from bad to worse? Very I'll, soon? I'll have to wait and see what the, interma the International Atomic Energy Agency says. Yes. Uh, Pat Toomey and, and Lindsey Graham are already saying that talks are probably going to go beyond this week. Would that be acceptable to you to give them another next I, week? I, I've given you my answer on that. Yes. Now, any deal that they cut here. You say, Senator Murphy says, it's going to be short of what you would do if you had complete control here. Are you concerned about that being too little and people on the Again. left coming up and saying, hey, you didn't go far enough It's something that can't Bottom line out? is I have a lot of faith in Senator Murphy and the Democrats who are negotiating, and I don't think they would bring to us a deal without teeth. Last one. Uh, so two questions here. Number one, uh, you heard we'll only get one question around here. OK, uh, you heard earlier today from some testimony about the Buffalo shooting, uh, about how doing nothing only fuels the fire. Number one, are you concerned about having nothing done here and more violence? And number two, uh, Congressman Jacobs was concerned about your response to his stance on gun violence and how he switched his viewpoint, saying that you know, you just said that he was feeling the fire. He was disappointed in that. What's your response to that? I was disappointed that Congressman Jacobs, I have a lot of respect for him. I know him. We get along. But he should have fought the NRA and fought the hard right people who don't represent a majority of people in his district, not even close. You Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.